Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and members of Missouri Senate Lutheran Churches from North Dakota and Minnesota. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of God Almighty, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Trinity is written in 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore the mountain and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword, and I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of abel Mohola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, 
all the knees that have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing the twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in Peter's first letter to the church, the third chapter. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For to this you are called, that you may obtain a blessing. For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake... You will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ as Lord, as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the great catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting only Thee, trusting Thee for full salvation, great and free. I am trusting Thee for pardon, at Thy feet I bow, for Thy grace and tender mercy, trusting now.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Elijah feels it necessary to tell God just how jealous he's been for the Lord. The rest of Israel has forsaken you, but not me, God. And yet here Elijah is, hiding out in a cave where the Lord has to seek him out. He's idle. He's throwing in the towel. He's abandoning his calling. Peter, too, was tired and hanging it up for the night. His labors had been just as fruitless as Elijah's preaching. There's a bit of sass in his response. You know, Jesus, we toiled all night and caught nothing. We're the fishermen. This is kind of what we do. And yet, by a miracle, by the Holy Spirit, he says, At your word, I will let down the nets. You have your callings too. You are husbands or wives, fathers or mothers. You are sons or daughters. You are citizens. You are workers and employees. One of us here is a preacher. And what about these tasks? Are they toilsome? Are you weary? Are you about ready to give up on your children, on your parents, on your nation? Do you see how your stations in life have everything to do with your faith? There's a very dangerous temptation to think that our work defines us. This sneaks into the church also because in our world, the word vocation is misunderstood to mean job. The high schoolers take to bus to science school for vocational instruction which means they're going to learn a skill for a specific job. So also you can get your degrees at North Dakota Science School for tractor repair and HVAC and the like. And that's your vocation, they say. Well, this is not what we mean biblically, because vocation means a calling. The word voice is essential to the word vocation. And the voice that we're talking about is God's. That's why vocation means something different than just your job. Whenever someone talks about their job as a calling, you should ask the question, who is calling? Jobs do not call to you. They only do that metaphorically. A vocation, a call from God, is not something that you feel. It doesn't hit you like a wind or an earthquake or a fire of emotions. No, it comes by a word, an audible, small, but clear word, God's word. The word heard with the ears when the scriptures are read, when it is preached to you, when Christians speak the gospel to one another, and when the water of holy baptism is joined to it on your head. You are called to be a Christian. You are called to saving faith in Jesus Christ. You are called and named with His holy name, Father, Son, and Spirit. Your particular vocations are the stations and relationships in which God has called you to be a Christian. And they aren't self-chosen. They aren't degree-certified or third-generation jobs. They are the relationships of this world in all three estates, in the family, church, and community. One way to think of it is this. Your vocations are who you are even when you sleep. You remain a father, a daughter, and a citizen even when you're not doing any particular works. You remain a parent and a child your whole life even once your kids move out and marry and start their own families. God's word says nothing about electricians, plumbers, welders, or office assistants. The Bible doesn't teach farmers how to plant and harvest and sell. Most of all, the Bible is not a book that tells you the job that is 
right for you. It says simply that you are called, called to obtain a blessing, and therefore called to bless. You are called by the Holy Spirit to be Christ's own. The common way that we use the word calling really has it kind of twisted around. A true vocation, a Christian station in life, has far less to do with you and what you want and far more to do with the one who calls. What the world means when it says your job is your calling is that you like it, you enjoy it, it pleases you. And thus we say, I feel called to it. But that attitude is directly opposed to Christianity. Because the Lord calls us to things that we do not want, may not always enjoy, and might even despise. The most famous Bible passage about Jesus' call to follow him, the call to be a disciple and a Christian, says this, If anyone would be my disciple, you must Deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow me. No one feels called to deny themselves. It's precisely our feelings and our desires that the Lord is calling us to crucify and to drown, as holy baptism indicates. Our struggle to believe this is precisely the war between the Holy Spirit and our sinful flesh. As you've learned it from the commandments, we should fear and love God so that we do all good works and all struggling against sin ought to come from the heart, from a sincere will in full agreement with God. But what about when it doesn't? Well, we see that today, that the saints of old fought the same internal struggle in their vocations too. Elijah, the fiery preacher who slew the prophets of Baal, was still found wallowing in self-pity. God commanded him to do his duty anyway. Peter, bold and fearless, only grudgingly agreed to the Lord's command to put out the nets. At your word, but I can't see this working. Now, here is where the mingling of the world's calling with God's really comes back to bite you. It makes us think that we must do everything from the heart willingly, always spontaneously joyful, or else it wouldn't be true. I have to wait until I feel like that, until I want to, and I really mean it. And if I can't do that, well, then that must not be my calling, we say. Dear saints, with such demonic logic, you can justify abandoning anything that doesn't serve your pleasure. Just ask yourself, how many divorces have rested on this? How many rebellions against parents or revolts against government? How many have rejected God's word and refused both its correction and its comfort, all in the name of this higher spirituality, the worship of their own desires? How contrary to Christ, Satan twists our hearts Everyone who follows me feels divinely called to indulge themselves, abandon the cross of their vocations, and walk away from the Ten Commandments, he says. Protect us from this, Heavenly Father. God indeed wants everything done willingly from the heart. That is why we sing that ancient prayer. Create in me a new, clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is a prayer of faith. It's a prayer that confesses with God and against ourselves. He has called us. That means that we are confident He will give us a new heart as He promises. And so we ask Him for it always. And if that is your prayer, then you dare not wait until some feeling of newness and rightness comes. Only if your faith is in yourself will you wait until the feeling is right. If your faith is in Christ, then you expect 
to be acting against your own sinful will and flesh. You expect to be denying yourself and to suffer a cross when you follow him. You do what is right because it is right, even as a confession against yourself. Labor and serve in your vocations, not because they please you, but because it has pleased God to call, enlighten, and sanctify you in them. And so he sanctified Elijah, the greatest prophet, and Peter, the greatest disciple. He did not make them always happy and carefree in their work. But he preserved them through their suffering, together with his remnant around the world. St. Peter's faithful words today could be on our mouths constantly. Nevertheless, at your word. That is how one fulfills their calling, only and by his word. At his word, we are heirs of eternal life. At his word, we are not failures and wicked, but we are righteous and forgiven. We are counted worthy of his son by his son's blood. The Lord did not accept Elijah's informal resignation. He also, thank God, did not give in to Peter's demonic request, Depart from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. Not at all. It is the Lord's pleasure to approach sinful men, to call them, to bring them through repentance into faith, through the cross, into the resurrection, through suffering and even death, into his eternal life. And vocation is the arena where faith is tried, tested, and exercised. It will always fail when faith is placed in ourselves, in our desires, and even in our successes. That is not saving faith any more than Peter's wisdom or nets or boat or willingness to try again is what saved him. It nearly drowned him in all of his success. The Lord simply says, let down your nets. And like Peter, you may not know what you are doing, and you may not see how it could work. But at my word, your labor is not in vain, he says, for I have called you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, amen. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you the good things that surpass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look with, on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information on the LCMS Church in your area, please visit the North Dakota or Minnesota North District websites at the addresses on your screen. Or log into www.lcms.org. If this program has been a blessing to you, please send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, North at 821 5th Avenue, South, Fargo, North Dakota, zip code 58103. It's through your prayers and continued support that we can spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the North Dakota and Minnesota North Districts of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and is supported by member churches and viewers like you. Thank you for your support.